going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. I am so excited about today's episode because number one, the weather is absolutely incredible. We're in the low 40s in mid-December. I'll have to be honest, I don't expect it to last very long, but I'll take it. It's been such a fair uh, weather so f it's been such a fair weather December so far. Our November was off to a really rough start and I was worried about how winter would go and it, we had a ton of snow in the beginning and then all of a sudden it just turned nice again. So I'll take it because it's allowing me enough time to get all these projects done. So one of those giant projects that has been on my to-do list and one that you all have been asking for for the longest time is a cold frame. And so uh, behind me, I've started building the cold frame and I'm going to explain how I got to this stage. Now, the reason why I have to explain it is because of my mistake. So the episode you saw last was actually recorded over. I mentioned in that, in that episode, actually, I was building a cold frame. Well, I was bringing you all along for it, cut by cut. Every, uh, everything was explained in video form and I recorded over it. So I'm really sorry about that. And that usually never, ever, ever happens. It's only happened a couple times. So now I have to explain how I got to that stage. And it's pretty easy, but I apologize because it doesn't really have the visual appeal that it would have had. So, so far I have two parts to the cold frame. I have the base and I have the angular top. Now, the, um, the reason why we have a base is because I want to be able to make it movable. The base, which is back there, is actually a carbon copy of the raised bed itself. It's four foot by 10 foot. And the reason why I made an exact carbon copy was so that I could basically set the cold frame on top of the raised bed and then move it when I'm done. I don't really like having a permanent cold frame. I know a lot of people don't mind it. I just personally like to have uniformity when it comes to the main growing season. I like all the beds to be the same. It's just my personal preference. I think it looks the best, but you do you. There's way more ways to do this than just the way that I'm showing you. This is just the way that I prefer. So that's why I did an exact carbon copy. Then what this angular top is, is actually going to sit on top of that piece there. And you'll see that because that's not done yet. But this is actually an angular top, which is going to allow the cold frame to have a slight slant. It's very, very important because what it does is, is it actually will tilt towards the sun and we have it at about a, uh, this is about a 30 degree angle or so. And so it's not super steep. Um, it's, uh, it's slightly less than, than 45 degrees, but I didn't exactly measure it. It's just anything less than 45 degrees is really important because you don't want it flat, but you also don't want it so steep that, uh, that it blocks a lot of the sun. The secret is to have just the sweet spot which allows the sun to come in. And what happens is it, it comes in at an angle, the angle that you choose, and what happens is the sun will come in and then it will bounce around. The heat will actually bounce around inside of the cold frame because if it's straight up, the sun will actually bounce off of the material and you really won't get a whole lot of heating inside the cold frame. If it's too steep, what will happen is the sun will bounce in and the heat will pretty much bounce right back out. So you have a, a sweet spot in between. Like I said, that's right around 30 to 35 degrees uh, of angle. So that's what we chose is right around there. Um, but uh, but that was that was pretty simple. And for the back of the cold frame, I chose a two foot by 12 foot by 12 foot piece. And for the sides, I chose a two by 12 by eight foot. I cut it in half because my beds are only four feet wide so I can save some money there and plus they don't make a four foot wide piece anyways. And that's when I just cut my angle straight up. I basically just took a, uh, I just took a chalk line and I started four inches uh, higher on the one side and then I, went, I took it all the way up to the angle uh, and then snapped the line and I cut it there. The reason why I started four inches higher is because this actually needs uh, a little bit of a, a side here. So I couldn't just cut it at a direct 45 degree angle all the way across because if I did that, what would happen is I would not have anything, any material here for the, uh, for the, the cold frame top to actually you know, hold itself together. So I chose just a four inches. It gave me a slightly less angle, less than 45 degrees, which was great. And also it allowed me to have something to secure it, uh, to secure it all together too. So to get that four inch piece, I just took the remainder of whatever I had laying around that was, that was 12 feet long. And I just ripped down a four inch section. And so this is that four inch section that was just ripped from a piece of scrap wood. So this is, again, this is just going to allow the whole frame to be held together and it's going to kind of give 
uh, some, some structural integrity to it. And it's also going to make everything flush so that the screen, or not the screen, but the, the greenhouse cover top that I'm going to be putting on the cold frame is all going to sit really level and really uniform. So uh, with that out of the way, that's everything that we've done so far. Not that many cuts. There's only one, two, three, really like three or four cuts to this entire project. So pretty simple. Um, so let's get to constructing the rest of it and then we can get assembling it and get it on the raised bed. We've still got some lettuce growing and I cannot wait to see how the lettuce grows underneath this cold frame. Obviously, the key component is getting some sun. We definitely need some sunlight because without that, the plants really won't grow and the cold frame really won't heat up that much. So it relies on sunlight and it's been pretty overcast. But I, can, uh, I cannot be complaining because with that overcast, it's also been pretty warm too. So you get a trade. Clear skies, cold nights. Uh, clear skies, sunny days. So yeah, you gotta take the good with the bad. So, all right, let's get constructing. So here's the basic shape of the cold frame. Now, because our beds were pretty much filled up uh, right to the top, I had to actually compensate for that and make these pretty deep. So um, if your beds are not filled up all the way, see, pretty much the soil level is gonna come right to the bottom of this bed here. So it's almost like there's a full empty bed on top, really. So the back has a lot of space really to gather all that thermal mass and hold it throughout the night. And then the front here is about 11 and a half, 12 inches or so. So it's basically like a full empty bed here. And that's going to allow a good amount of airspace, which is going to act as a good insulated barrier. There's a great insulator, but it's also going to hold in that thermal mass, which is going to keep the plants warm throughout the night. Now what I've devised is a way to keep not only the boards together, but also keep the cold frame on the raised bed. Just when there's snow or if there's high winds or just shifting in general from thawing and freezing and things like that, things can shift around and I want things to stay in place. So since the I know the bottom is an exact carbon copy to the inch uh, of the exact raised bed that we're gonna be putting them on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two by fours and I'm going to make stays out of the two by fours. This is going to not only, since I cut them 12 inches uh, about, or no, sorry, I cut these 16 inches long, they're going to be plenty enough, it's gonna be plenty enough wood to attach uh, with a nail, not only the top and the bottom together, but it's also going to leave a little bit of bottom here which is going to attach to the outside of the raised bed. You'll see how that works. But I'm really excited about this because it makes it easy. You know, there's really nothing complicated about this. As long as you have a saw, some nails, and, and a hammer, and some basic building skills, you can make this too. It's really simple. So this is the easiest part. Once we get to the, to the, um, to the door, it'll get a little more hands-on, but that, uh, that shouldn't be too difficult either. Now I'm just gonna do that four times, or three times more, because I really don't need that many stays, and I really just need something pretty basic to hold the ra or the uh, the cold frame to the raised bed. So not a whole lot, but four nails in each stay, four stays total, we should be fine. Now the real question is how am I gonna get it all the way over there? As they say, there's more than one way to move a cold frame. 
Now, once I actually get the cold frame onto the raised bed, I want the angle, so I want the angled piece to be facing the west. The reason is because we actually get uh, some, uh, some shade in the morning, so it really won't do us a whole lot of good to have the angle facing the east. Either way, the best angle is south facing. That means you're gonna have the longest sun exposure. But because our beds are running, uh, well, our, our beds are running lengthwise north and south, I don't really have that luxury because the angle would be really weird had we had it running <laughs> this way up the raised bed. It's a pretty snug fit. Personally, I would have made the beds, in hindsight, about a half inch wider than the original bed, just to make sure for any margin of error that there would be, because I'm human, uh, that it was not so tight. So we got them on. Getting them off might require a crowbar. We'll see. So I'm almost done. Just putting in the last few screws here on the top portion. I just got the door all finished up. I did make one small adjustment though, and uh, that was to put a center support brace, which I'll show you in a second, because as I was lifting it up, um, there was not really, uh, it was not a good support in the center, so it was tending to skew back and forth. And I could tell that would not last very long with me opening and shutting it. The, the nails would eventually work themselves loose and and then it would just fall apart. So I like to build things that are going to last a long time. And the final thing that I was going to note is that this is not super airtight. Lumber has different you know, imperfections. There's never a straight piece or at least a perfectly straight piece. Um, and so that leads to, to air gaps and things like that. Um, that's very natural and we're definitely going to address those. Um, there's a few options we have available. I can take some, uh, just some uh, styrofoam insulation that has a mylar backing. I can take that. I can take some, some uh, expanding foam and put expanding foam in between all the cracks. I can do that. Um, either way, none of it's going to be coming in contact with my food, so I feel pretty safe using anything really. Um, the only thing I wouldn't probably put on is the fiberglass insulation because that has a tendency to shed and, and the dust can get, uh, you know, can land on your food and then can affect you. So that's probably the only thing I would rule out. But there's a lot of different options we can do to airtight this, but it is very important to airtight it. Otherwise, there will always be that outflow of hot air because it will, it will try to create equilibrium with the colder outside air. Um, and so you'll always, you'll always be losing some heat a whole lot quicker if it's not airtight. So we will address that, just not today because, well, I haven't really decided what I'm going to do yet. So maybe post uh, some comments in the comments box below and, uh, and uh, I'll, you know, I'll take all your recommendations in mind and, and we'll see what we decide to go with. Before we get the plastic on, I wanted to make a quick note. We're actually gonna be starting some more seeds for this cold frame here. Uh, the back portion of the bed is planted out with lettuce, but this whole half here has nothing in it. And so we're gonna be planting some radishes and spinach, but I'm not going to start them directly in the beds because it's just too cold, they won't sprout. And so uh, one thing that I'm really encouraging all of you to do, if you are starting in cold frames or moving some really cold hardy greens outdoors, is if it's too cold for, for seeds to germinate, um, anything below about 55 degrees is too cold. The seeds really won't germinate that well. And uh, if they do, you'll have poor germination rates. So I'm gonna start them indoors. And because they're cold hardy, I'm gonna start them indoors and I'm gonna move them outdoors and they really won't even notice a difference. The only thing is that we'll actually have germination. If we planted the seeds, the seeds might not even germinate until early spring, which wouldn't be the end of the world. But the reason why we're building this cold frame is so we can have greens in winter, not spring. So, <laughs> so that's a quick tip for you all that you can utilize to grow more food and, uh, and hopefully it benefits you guys. All right. Let's get the plastic on. So what we're going to be using for plastic is this six mil plastic drop cloth. 
Now, six mil is very thick. In fact, six mil is about as thick as regular greenhouse, uh, greenhouse plastic. The only thing is that this is not UV resistant, so this will degrade over time, and that's fine, because the cost of this is about three or four times less than, than greenhouse plastic, and this will last about half as long. So doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to buy greenhouse plastic in my opinion for a small project like this now if you're doing a greenhouse absolutely for sure because they just don't make huge rolls like this. this is the biggest roll they make which is a 10 foot by 25 foot so 250 square feet and i got this for five dollars so you really can't go wrong there five i think 5.99 actually so six bucks so really not that bad at my local hardware store and one thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to double this up so we're going to put two layers. That's going to create an air gap in between. Plus, we're gonna have 12 mil of plastic. Each time you add a layer of protection, you get about three to four degrees of frost protection. So essentially, we're going to get right around between six and eight degrees of, of frost protection, which is great. Not to mention the added benefit of having all of that air inside the cold frame that's gonna be heating up and recirculating throughout the night. It's gonna be a definite win uh, for our plant. Mission accomplished. So glad this project is done. The sun is setting and we are done. Man, it looks good. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. I did have a tiny bit of difficulty tightening down the plastic as tight as I really wanted. I made a mistake in the beginning by uh, attaching two corners and that's never okay because what you have to do is you have to start on one side and then whichever side you staple, that is the next side you have to pull so that it gets tight because what I did was I stapled this side and then I stapled this side. And so there was no way for me to pull on it because it was pulling on an angle. And that's what caused a little bit of rippling right there. But you know what? It is so, it's so nominal because we have the project done. It is covered with plastic. And now the next thing is just making it airtight. So uh, I'm really happy with how this turned out. Really far exceeded my expectations. The total cost for this project was $50. I always try to keep it 50 or under. So um, I got a lot of the lumber as second cuts, so they weren't the prettiest. But again, like I said, I mean, do you really know? I mean, honestly, can you really tell the difference that I paid about 50% less than, uh, than like retail value because there was some live ends and some nasty spots? So these two by 12 by 12 foots are normally $25 a piece. But check this out. See that? Because they've got holes in them from where the knots were, there's another one here. Because they've got holes in them, I got them for just $7.50 a board. So to do this project for under 50 bucks is pretty incredible considering the fact that I was looking online for some, uh, for some cold frame kits and believe it or not, a four by four cold frame was nearly $300. That's just insane. $300, is, you're never gonna see an investment, uh, you know, a return on your investment. So uh, for this to cost 50 bucks, it's definitely not that big of a deal. Obviously, we will go a little bit over $50 because we're gonna have some insulating material and some stuffing and stuff to fill the holes and gaps that are there. But still, like 60 bucks, still not the end of the world. Way cheaper. And this is 48 square feet rather than just 16 for like, six times less. I love it. I absolutely love it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. If you did, make sure to give this video a huge thumbs up. This was uh, definitely a big project. So this is, um, you know, this was uh, a, a big budget project. And uh, so if you guys give this a huge thumbs up, it helps spread this video around to more people. And we do make money, obviously, on the ads on this video. So thank you guys so much for your support. Thank you so much for your love. And we will catch you all on the next episode. This is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. And we'll catch you all later. See ya. Bye.